Have you seen the first top 25 poll for the 2017 season, according to the AP? Well, it was just recently released, and five Big 12 teams are ranked in it, including Kansas State coming in at number 20. So there are high expectations for the guys from the Little Apple. Can't say that that was really the case last year at this time, because you know, it was supposed to have been a rebuilding year for Bill Snyder's team. As a matter of fact, one source last year had K-State picked to finish 8th out of 10 teams. Well, so much for that, and you know, maybe we should be surprised because K-State did not have an 8th place finish in the Big 12. In fact, not even close. They finished 6-3 and three last year in Big 12 play, 9-4 and four overall. Yeah, so much for a rebuilding year, right? I mean, maybe we should be surprised. But on the other hand, maybe we shouldn't be because Bill Snyder, you know, we know his success, his track record in Manhattan, Kansas. I mean, the guy wins, and last year's team, you know, I know he's won a couple of Big 12 championships, but last year might have been one of his better coaching uh, seasons ever considering that he didn't have a lot of experience, and they still finished with a solid 9-4 record. Entering this year, though, like I said, there are expectations. A lot of players coming back on both sides of the ball, and K-State will be a factor in the Big 12. We'll begin offensively where Jesse Ertz, the quarterback, returns. And unlike 2015, in 2016 he got to play the entire year and was a threat on both passing and rushing. As a matter of fact, last year he was the leading rusher for the Wildcats with over 1,000 yards on the ground and had 12 touchdowns. As far as throwing the ball, look, I know that K-State runs multiple offenses. They love to run, as a matter of fact, more than pass. But still, Ertz showed that you know he can play when it comes to passing the ball as well. He was efficient, had about 1,800 yards passing, and only threw four interceptions off nine touchdowns. Jesse Ertz, the, the thing about this K-State offense that makes it so difficult to defend, you don't know if Ertz is going to keep the ball, if he's going to hand it off, or if he's going to go in passing mode. So, you know, th this K-State offense, it's unlike any other in the Big 12. Of course, we know OU, OSU, now Kansas, and of course, TCU, Texas Tech. You know, these are teams that predominantly throw the ball for success. But K-State, their philosophy, you know, make sure to keep the chains moving, make sure to keep the opposing offense off the field as much as possible, you know, win time of possession battles, that's how K-State's offensive plan lays out. And last year, for the most part, it worked. Um, the running game, most of the running backs return. Charles Jones, you lose him. But they've got other running backs who are just as capable of getting the job done. In fact, that fact at the bottom of the screen tells you everything. It was so productive as far as rushing yards per carry. You can do that, then you can wear down the defense. And so Alex Barnes, who last year as a sophomore, had nearly eight yards per carry. He returns, had six touchdowns a year ago. Uh, Justin Sillman, um, now entering his junior year, uh, the guy had three touchdowns a year ago, almost 500 yards rushing. And another running back that I think will be a factor to scat back in Dalvin Warmack. So plenty of experience in terms of the running backs, the receivers. Um, Deontay Burton's gone, but they still have threats as far as wide out. Plenty of speed on the outside. And you return Byron Pringle. Of course, we know this guy as a special teams gem. But as receiver, got to watch out for what he can do as well. Had four TDs a year ago and had 39 catches to go with almost 650 yards receiving. Dominic Heath, now entering his junior year, also uh, was productive as well. 45 catches, three TDs, and had 438 yards in receiving. And in addition to this Wildcat team, from Cal, from Berkeley, Carlos Strickland. The offensive line, though, I think gives K-State a very good chance to be very successful in 2017, returning a lot of experience from the 2016 squad. And that will include uh, Reed Nebar, started all 13 games a year ago and was Big 12 honorable mention, now entering his senior year. Left tackle, Scott France, a sophomore last year, started every single game. And the right tackle, this guy, all Big 12 coaches first team, and all AP Big 12 second team, talking about uh, Dalton Risner on the right side, now entering his junior year. And the tight end in Dayton Valentine, a terrific uh, blocking tight end, uh, now entering his junior year. Even the two non-full-time starters for the K-State offensive line saw some PT in 2016. On the left side, Abdul Beecham, now a junior, started in five games a year ago, and playing the total of eight, and rounding out the K-State offensive line, right guard Tyler Mitchell, as a freshman in 2016, started in six games and played in a total of nine. Lots of experience, like I said, on that K-State offensive line. 231 yards rushing per game is what they had a year ago. Very good. 
As you can imagine, though, the passing game, because of the K-State style of offense, the play selections, it's never going to be up there with Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, and Texas Tech in terms of total passing yards. Last year, they only averaged 157 yards in the air per game, which was dead last. But the big thing you look for if you're Kansas State, as far as passing, it's going to be yards per completion. Last year, averaging 6.6 .6 yards per completion. But when the Wildcats averaged 7 yards per completion, they were perfect 5-0. So you look for that consistency. And again, as long as you can show the ability to pass, that will prevent the opposing defense from lining up 7 or 8 in the box and trying to sell out and stop in the run. As long as K-State can show that ability to still be efficient as far as passing, that's the main thing Bill Snyder's offense looks for. As far as the defense, they were very good last year, were the Wildcats. In fact, uh, they only gave up 387 yards total per game. Now, that was not even in the top 50 nationwide. It was close. It was at 51st. But then again, nobody last year in the Big 12 was in the top 50 as far as total D. K-State came the closest at 51st. And again, that was tops of any Big 12 school. Now, you do return a lot of talent on that defensive line, but you do lose um, the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year in Jordan Willis. He was a good one. But the other defensive end that I think is going to have a real good year is Reggie Walker. He had a pretty good freshman year. As a matter of fact, started all 13 games, six and a half sacks last year, and was the Big 12 Defensive Freshman of the Year. The other defensive end, though, he's got to fill some big shoes in place of Willis is Tanner Wood, now entering his senior year, started a couple of games last year, 34 tackles and two sacks. Both defensive tackles are back. And remember, K-State was tops in the Big 12 in rushing D as well, only giving up 115 yards per game. Both tackles returned. Will Geary now entering his senior year. He started a total of 30 games in his decorated career. The other defensive tackle is Trey Dishon, now entering his sophomore year as a freshman, starting played in every game last year except for one, and had 18 tackles, three sacks. Big concern, though, for K-State is going to be the linebacking core because you've lost several good players in this department. They're almost starting from scratch, as a matter of fact. Um, losing, you know, Elijah Lee, losing Will Davis, just the name of a couple. So, you know, K-State will sometimes go 4-3. Sometimes they'll play that 4-2-5 alignment. But regardless, linebacking core is going to be a little bit raw. Trent Tanking expecting to start. And also, too, is uh, Jay Kirby. You know, Jade Kirby, both Kirby and Tanking, Primarily special teams players last year. So they're going to be hopping into a pretty big role, although tanking did get to start late in the year against TCU and played well in that game. And then another linebacker who'll see plenty of playing time from the junior college ranks, the Quan Patton, who played at Trinity College. But the secondary, got to feel a little bit better about this area if you're a Wildcat fan because you do return most of them. Both corners could be the best set of corners in the Big 12. DJ Reed, Duke Shelley, both juniors, both had three interceptions apiece, and Reed last year had 95 tackles. Shelley had 48. The safeties, well, one of them returns, and Kendall Adams now entering junior year, 62 tackles, and started in all 13 games. The other safety is Sean Newland entering his senior year, but had limited action last year on the defensive side. And running out the K-State secondary, when they do go to the nickel package, I'm um, expecting to see Elijah Walker, who previously played junior college ball. So the defensive line for K-State I think will be very good. The secondary I think will be fine as well. But the linebacking core might take them some time to develop. Special teams has always been a strength for a Bill Snyder team. This year should not be any different. Matthew McCrane is back. 90% field goals made in his career, including 11-14 last year. And Nick Walsh returns. Good average last year, punting 43 yards per boot. The schedule for K-State, well, the non-conference part of it's ridiculous. I mean, look at that. <laughs> Central Arkansas, Charlotte, and Vanderbilt. You can't go 3-0. Then K-State will definitely not reach expectation this year. It'll be the opposite of last year. But the first two Big 12 games are against teams right now in transition. Baylor and Texas. And this is something to keep in mind as far as the K-State schedule. The difference between being a good team and a real good team is is trying to snap some streaks against three teams. K-State has not won in Austin against Texas since 2011. The other two streaks, though, are longer. K-State has not won in Stillwater since 1999 against Oklahoma State. And the other streak I'm going to talk about is even longer and more unbelievable. You see, the Wildcats have not beaten Oklahoma in Manhattan since 1996, 21 years ago. So, again, three streaks and we'll see if K-State 
can snap them. Vegas says that K-State's going to win eight games. I say Kansas State's going to win at least nine. Again, the offense, it works for Bill Snyder. We'll see, though, if the passing game can be a little bit more productive, and we'll see if the linebackers can step it up. Again, that's the area of least experience by far. The Wildcats will be a factor in the Big 12, but I just don't think they have enough to win it. That's my look at the Wildcats. We'll see you next time.